What a weekend it was last weekend over in the United States. Josh Taylor, Edinburgh-born Josh Taylor, became the newly crowned undisputed light welterweight champion. Josh Taylor knocked down the American Josie Ramirez in Las Vegas, recording a 114-112 score on all the judges' cards. This was an absolutely magnificent performance. What next for Josh? We're about to find out. Josh Taylor joins us live, guys, this lunchtime. Josh, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. I like hearing that, the new undisputed champion. I loved hearing that, so yeah, I'll never get tired of hearing that. Well-deserved. Well Well-deserved, well Josh. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Simon is with me, so too is Spencer Oliver. Do me a great favour, Josh. When you arrived back in the UK, uh, I saw you, you were speaking to somebody and you you, you, you did a take-off of the American announcer, did you not? Uh, the, the ring announcer. Was that right? <laughs> G- give me a bit of that. It was magnificent. Who was it? I was uh, I was doing I was doing the uh, I was I was doing the impression of uh, Terry Tibbs at Face Jacker Phone Jacker. That's what I was doing. Oh, what's it? <laughs> Give us a bit. Yeah, of that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah I'll be watching that. It was pretty cool because um, I, I, I'm a big fan of the show. It's been it's, it's been pretty funny over the years, and me and my friends and that have a laugh of it. And uh, my, my my good friend Gordon Smart actually got in touch. He's got the same agent as him, and he got in touch with him, and he, he sent me a video. Of good luck um, to before the fight, but yeah. doing it in the Terry Tibbs voice, and I, it was amazing. So that's what I was doing. It was in my head for 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 days afterwards. So, I loved yes, it. Uh, Can you give me a good, bur- yeah. give me a burst of it? Oh, I need to get I need to get in the and the new undisputed world champion Josh Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Much luck. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you are exactly that. And Spencer, you want to congratulate Josh, don't you? Yeah, listen, Josh, I just thought that was a first class performance, mate. Going into that contest, it was, you know, it was considered a 50 50 fight. You dominated that from the opening bell, if I'm totally yeah. honest. I know that they were saying it was quite close up to the halfway mark, but that sixth round, step back, straight left hand through the middle, turning point. And I wanted to say, round seven, when you caught him with that uppercut and he was totally gone, and the referee, yeah. the referee um, Kenny Bayliss, just give him every opportunity to survive. I think there was 30 seconds left on the clock when I was watching. And by the time he finished the count, there was less than 10 seconds left, nine seconds or something. The fight would have been yeah. over there and then for me. But, mate, yeah, just want to congratulate you really on a top-class performance. I think going back to you know when we saw you against Regis Progre that that convinced me that you had the tools and the minerals to sort of go on and become a great fighter and possibly the greatest fighter that Scotland's ever had and you're well on your way to that mate yeah thank you very much Spencer I appreciate it man and uh, yeah it was good and I appreciate you saying that about the fight as well I thought I was in, uh, I thought I was in control the whole fight um, you was I think I think that all, like I, I watched the I've, I've had the opportunity to watch the fight back and I've watched it back twice now. Um, and I'm still of the same opinion. I, only, I think I only lost three, maybe four rounds, mm. max. Um, you yeah. know, I thought I won the first two and then I, I gave away the third one, obviously. Um, and then I think I only maybe lost maybe one or two rounds after that. Um, like, you know, so... I mean, look, if, if you look at the scorecards... If you look at the scorecards that Jim read out, 114, 112 on all three cards, had it not yeah. been for those two knockdowns, they would have scored that a draw, which is so, yeah. which is totally yeah. outrageous. Scandalous. But scandalous yeah. Because, yeah, yeah like I, I say... Know, I mean, I mean, they made, they made it sound like it was a really close fight, but I don't think it was all that close, really. I'm, um, with, I'm with you, mate. I was. It was actually quite an easy fight for me. I mean, I, I cruised through the whole fight probably in third gear, you know, um, Obviously, I put my foot on the gas on this, the end of the seventh round, but never had enough time left in the, in the round. Um, but I I decided to to box to the game plan, you know, um, use the game plan. Everybody was saying, you know, is he can he be disciplined for the twelve rounds and can he can he box the instructions? And well, I showed that. I showed that, didn't mm. I? Um, the rest of the fight mm. was a doddle. You know, I boxed them and moved them and, and made it easier. And the scary thing is, uh, Spencer, um, I think that I could have made that even easier for myself and I could have performed even better, won that fight even better. Mm. I don't think that was my my best performance. Um, I really rated myself maybe 7, 8 out of 10. I, I believe that I could have written that whole fight and not let them lay a glove on me. First of all, congratulations, Josh. I thought you were absolutely outstanding. And I thought I looked at it and I scored. I thought you'd run it by at least four rounds. But when you got, when the build up to the fight, you were 
very much in his face. And I, yeah. I looked at the press conferences. I, I laughed at your reaction to his manager. You know, have you finished? Yeah. Uh, and then went on to say something else, which I won't repeat on air. <laughs> but did you think that a lot of what you did in the build-up to the... By the way, have you got your belts? I've got, I've got my belts back. Yeah, they're here now. United um, Airlines are useless, just, aren't they? I'm just waiting on the on the new ones. Yeah, I, I was thinking uh, the worst, obviously, or not, it would happen to me. Um, but I got back, when I got the cases back, um, the case I had the belts in it, the padlock was knocked off it. I thought, oh, no, Someone's no nicked way. it. Yeah. Um, but obviously I had the letter in the case and I'd been through customs and had the bag check and all that so that's what it was Did you Everything think besides, besides being a better fighter did you think that some of the way that you prepared in the press conferences and some of the things that you were saying to him you were talking about him looking dehydrated do you think you got into his head a little bit? Yeah affected the way he fought? 100% um, 100% got into his head Never, no one's ever sort of messed with them and put on them like that. They've always been respectful on the way up to the to the, the fight, you know. Um, and it was quite, you know, I had to find something not to like about Ramirez um, mm. because he was such a nice person and the things he does with the charities yeah. and, um, and, the, and the community and stuff like that. I had to find something um, to not like him. So I decided to get in his face and say things about his style, you know, and, and make himself doubt himself. Um, you know, second guessing his weight cut, and I saw him uh, running and really training the weight off. So got someone to take a video of him on the on the uh, treadmill, and uh, just really messed with his head in the week up to the fight and threw him off his game. I believe that um, I, I kind of half beat him before the fight started mentally, mm. um, uh, and I decided that was the route I was going to take to get in his head because that was this was the first time that. Um, he was in the world level and the world scene that he had been getting doubted. Um, so I, I was I was cementing that doubt in his in his mind the whole week. What, uh, did, you until... make, what did you make, Josh? We had Gareth A. Davis on the other day, and he was outraged that the broadcasters hadn't picked up what he thought was the greatest spotted Scottish boxing performance since Ken Buchanan, and was outraged that you hadn't got the screen time and the air time that you should have got, and it wasn't shown on British yeah. TV the way yeah. it should have done. What's your sort of feeling about that? Yeah, I was. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit um, surprised and kind of felt let down. Um, you know, mm. I think it. I think it is one of the best Scottish sporting achievements in a long, long time. And even it is. British, it's it is a long time, and spe- especially in recent history, it's one of the yeah. best uh, victories of uh, people have pulled off for, for over here. And um, I kind of felt like on the build up, and you know. And with the lack of the TV, no picking it up, it kind of felt like no one cared, um, and no one really gave a toss about it, you know. So it, it, it kind of, it kind of cheesed me off a little bit, and uh, you know, I was kind of like, well, how, why am I not getting the recognition? But they're talking about bloody Logan Paul and I. Uh, <laughs> Good shout, yeah, well or said. Fifty-year-old 50 Floyd Mayweather who, uh, who just looks like an old man. You know, and some YouTube guy, the the guy picking up that and talking about that and talking about Fury and uh, Wilder. When there's one of the biggest fights in boxing happening right in front of you, someone for your homegrown um, is is daring to be great, and uh, no one gave a toss about it. Mm. It was, that's mm. what it really felt like. It really felt like no no one cared. We 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 love the fact that you've dared to be great, Josh. Um, I mean, it makes me think. I remember Jim Watt, and before that, Ken Buchanan, of course, with Roberto Duran. What Jim Watt did was incredible. Ricky Burns, and now you've given it all of Scotland somebody to be mega proud of. What what's next for you? I know you want to fight maybe at Edinburgh Castle. You want to fight maybe yeah. at the home of your beloved Hibs, Easter Road. Yeah, yeah, I would love that. I think that's what I want to do next. Um, I haven't boxed at home since I think it, the late end of 2016 or 17. I think it was since the last time I boxed in, in Edinburgh, um, and that was against Miguel Vasquez. So that that's that's a long, long time ago. That the last time I boxed actually at home. So um, I'd like I'd like to come back and uh, I'd like to have a homecoming fight. Um, at, at Edinburgh Castle or Easter Road, I think that would uh, it would be a really good one for me and a nice one for me to do. I would, uh, I think, I deserve that um, after all that I've did on um, in my career. You know. Yeah, Josh, you've been on an incredible journey since winning the Commonwealth Games. You only go back seven years since then. You've now become undisputed champion. Um, incredible journey. Um, 
I see you talking about different opponents, and I see different opponents calling you out as well. Tiafomo Lopez, who put Lomachenko, who's down at lightweight, he's been saying that he would like to fight now with you, and that's at lightweight. And then moving up to welterweight, you've got Terence Crawford, another great fighter, undisputed champion. I mean, is that sort of road you're going to be looking at doing? Like, do you want to sort of conquer different weights? I mean, what's the what's the journey? What's the plan? Yeah, well, I don't really know yet. Um, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit back and enjoy this uh, this victory and let it soak in. You know, I'm gonna let. First of all, I want to see see my family. Um, I've not still not seen my family yet mm. since I've been back. Um, I saw my dad briefly. I saw my mum briefly and my little sister briefly. Um, so I haven't seen anybody since I've been back. So um, I'm gonna spend some time with my family. Forget about boxing for a couple of weeks. Um, and and, and catch up with my family. You know. Um. And enjoy this victory with them, you know. So I'm going to do that. Um, but having said that, I'll, I'll be back in the gym on Monday. I'll be back on the road, sitting the roads. I'll not be hitting anything for a while. My hands are still a little bit tender and so. Uh, but I, I, I will be back in the gym on Monday, uh, training and keeping fit again. So um, I, I'm not really sure. I've not thought about what I want to do yet. What I want to do next. I'm. I'm pretty sure I won't be short of options now. I've got that big bullseye on my back. Absolutely, yeah. You're the man, mate. You are the man, Josh. Well done. And this yeah. is one of many messages coming into us this lunchtime. Scott Chesney, a big fight fan. It is absolute class listening to Josh Taylor on Talksport this lunchtime. What a guy! Well, he's right. What a guy. Well done again, Josh. And we'll keep in touch because what you are doing is nothing short of extraordinary. Outstanding. Well done. Outstanding. Congratulations, mate. Well, well done. done. Thank you. Well done.